most difficult to write. Um, it's very important you focus on this. Okay, so data received looks like this. You can see it was given an explanation, a line, xxx string, line, xxx string, etc. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a buffer. We're going to uh, leave this long string but only take out data when it's ready. And then we're going to find out what that data represents. So we declare here the data first, the string, um, the static is the string. Uh, so this is a temporary, but this is the actual string data. Now the reason I know that is this is static. If you remember static from one of my videos, the static is going to stay here and it's just going to keep adding itself. Um, right here where the code is, it says string buffer data equals string buffer data and string data, the temporary that just came in. Now, string data, you have to get it. So here's the windsock, and this says whatever index this is, um, that get data, string data, and it's VB string. So um, once it gets the data, string data becomes it. So now that's why I'm saying, hey, the actual data is equal to, is equal to itself and add any extra data we just got. So we have that real big long line of data and we need to decode it. Um, well, not actually decode, we're breaking it up. So we're going to run the data down here. Let me also s explain what I got here. Um, here's the string that when we split it. Here's for looping. Uh, we just have an integer. And then this is what the string is without the delimiter. Um, so we're going to run the data. If the, if the if in the big string of text is this line and it's greater than zero, that means that somewhere within there, there is a line. So we need to get out the text. Um, so we're going to split the data and find which code to run. So here's the, the array. Um, and we're going to equal to split because we don't know. It's this array, we don't know uh, how many elements it is so we're actually just going to equal to it split but here it is up here again so you can see it's got the two the two comp uh, print C bars or whatever I can't remember what it's called um, so we just set it like this because remember in my array video we don't know what our elements are going to be but down here when we split it it's going to split them so um, by that line thing I was talking about now if we split it by the line thing instead of having line xxx space string we're gonna have line or we'll, we won't be with line we'll be with numbers um, and then a space in the string data the actual string that what someone wrote um, or whatever we wanted to send so down here we go to the first element not used um, because the first element is the reason it's not used the zero in index um, is because when you split with this, it's going to be nothing. But the second one will be on on the right of that, so it'll be that the whatever number space and string. So we're going to say for we're going to loop through that array, the lowest number plus one. We're not going to use zero because it's nothing. We already know that to the highest in the array. So right now, what the data is going to look like is three numbers space something and then the next one is three numbers space something so we say if the length is greater than or equal to four then string data without delimiter what this is is it checks to see if the length is greater than four in that array and if it is take from the right side everything except four so um, the reason we do that is because everything on the left is just a code that we wrote, a code number. Um, but everything on the right is actual text that may be used for something. Maybe it's some, a message someone wrote. Now here is check which data is received. Now you could write some other numbers um, or whatever you want to do, but I used 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0002 and so forth because um, it's easier to remember for me as long as I see hey 001 that must be the ping I'm going to set up I haven't written any any um, code here because I was going to go over that later There's so much to this 
Um, so we're checking which data is received. We're taking the the um, array again and whichever index it is by this point and the left of it um, three so that should be on the left side of that big long chunk after it's split up so we'll have um, either 001, 002, 003, 004 or even 005 uh, see here okay so go back up here um, so if it's 001, if it ever sends a 001 uh, code, that means that the ping will go off, but there is no code there right now. So we go to 002, received a username, um, well then we just have to say now the list box, add that person's name, it's going to be the other side, the right side of the data, see string without delimiter, that was up here. Um, then show the user connected, so we're up to the lobby. Um, going to be their name has connected. Check if host, if it is host, send this data to everyone um, to other connections. <coughs> um, basically the reason I send the not the string delimiter without de del delimiter, the reason I don't send that is because you need to send the this again with the, um, the line in front of it. So that's why you notice it's the array and the index number because when it gets when it comes back for that person and it goes through the data received it has to uh, check what it is again so um, now send the user that a new user has connected um, however if username is same so send to new connected user um, the index and then what the string without data is limiter excuse me <clears throat> so if it's 003, this is message received, so we need to update the lobby with whatever they wrote. Um, check if host, if it's a host, send this information back to everyone, um, all those other connections. Now remember, if one client sends this to the host, the host will not send it to that same client because he already, he already knows he sent something, so it's going to send it to everybody else. That's why you'll notice um, it says send to other connections because we're skipping whichever index sent it. If it's zero, one, or whoever sent it, we're not sending the message back to them. And you'll notice I put this into into front of it because um, this is just the extraction. It's just a number, three numbers in front. So if I don't send with this in front, when it gets the code, for that person, it won't get um, split up and then it won't get decoded correctly. So here's 004, user exited, um, remove user from, so we're getting the user uh, index, using some more sub, um, and then we're going to, excuse me, go back up, update the lobby. Um, again, this is the without the code, without the left side, so we're on the right side of that string. Check if host. Okay, so if it's host, send to all other connections. If else not, if it's in string that it was the host, close the socket, if open, and connect. So basically what happens here is um, if it's the host, send to all of them that you're exiting. Um, if it's not, we can close the, the connection and try to reconnect. Um, down here is the 005 message box host is left closing the program. And then empty the string after we've decoded all of it. Because there's no extra there's no extra string left after we've split it all out. Um, so you notice that's a lot of stuff to go over right there. <coughs> If you have been watching my videos, this will be a little bit easier to understand. So if you've been keeping up, you'd understand this a little bit more. Um, so here's the code to send to other connections. Basically, we need some, whoever sent it, we need to skip them because they don't need to know that they sent it. We use on error resume next. The reason being we use on error resume next is because if you're looping through the Winsock control array and you have one, two, but then someone left that was three. Um, you'll get an error. 
because you're starting from the lowest plus one. You don't need to start at the host. Host is zero. So that's why we start at one uh, to the highest. So we want to go one, two, three, four, five. But if three is gone, it's going to give an error. So we're just resuming next, saying we don't need to worry about that. Um, if the index does not equal the same one. So during the loop, if you put do not send to person number one, um, it says if one doesn't equal one at this point, then the WinSock is going to send data, string data. <coughs> I'm going to move down here, send user to new, send user list to new connected user. Um, again, this is just putting take it's taking their name and putting it up on the on the list box. Um, <coughs> but this is just sending to those people, hey, this is a name we need we need for those other people to um, put in their list box. So if I connect to the host and um, my name is Zach, then the host gets that information and sends this 002, line 002, excuse me, and that person's name um, to all the other people. And then they get added. So that's the whole point here. Okay, so uh, get user exited index. This is, you don't know which user exited, so it's going to go, it's going to loop through the index from one to um, the list count minus one. Now, the re reason it's list count minus one is the list count counts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But um, the index of a list index, a list box, excuse me, list index is zero. So you need to subtract one. Otherwise, you're going to go from one to 15 when it's actually supposed to be one to 14. Now, if that list with the index is equal to the string that's being searched, then we found out which index it was that the person uh, left. So we can use that index to remove them. This is updating the lobby, whichever text is there, add an add a enter line, and then the string text to add. Um, here's the lobby, start the cell start. So this is the position of the crosshair, the cursor of the mouse is going to start at the very bottom of the text. Um, go down here, here's text message to click. Um, so if you click within the spot that you want to write a text message, uh, it's checking to see if it's the first time. If it is the first time, it's going to erase the beginning where it says please write here. It's right here. I'll open it. I'm right here. So if I click there, it'll erase it the very first time, but not after that. Okay, going down. And this is change. Um, if whatever they're writing in the in the message section changes, it's checking to see if there's nothing there, then the button that says send message has to not be enabled. Um, if there's some kind of text there, uh, and the number of, and check the number of people first. If there's more than one person um, in the list box, then we can say, okay, it's ready to send a message. That's this right here, this button. So it's being enabled if there's more than one person, and you have more than nothing text. I don't want you to send nothing text. Okay, here's the key press. Again, when they're writing a message, we want to block certain keys. There they are blocked. Um, also, if it's the first time they pushed any button in there, uh, it will run the click event. The click event will check to see if it's the first time they clicked in there. If it's not, then it will erase. Uh, basically, so if you don't click in here, 